Have you ever wondered why brides wear veils? The pretty, beautiful, delicate brides do not feel complete without this magical and emblematic piece that is the veil and which we associate with the traditional bride. There are many theories about their origin and how they became so popular in wedding ceremonies to this day. What we do know is that these pieces make up an essential part of the bride's dress and complete that dream look for that special day. There are thousands of different designs and styles. Some are embroidered, others are handmade, and the most special are inherited generation after generation. Within the totality of the wedding attire, the veil is the most representative accessory and the oldest. The etymology of the word veil comes from the Latin bellum, which means to care for, what's over to protect the woman. As for its history, there are various theories about why and when it started. Although today the original meaning has been completely lost, wedding dress designers continue to attach great importance and maintain this tradition by updating it with modern and sophisticated elements. There are many beliefs about the custom of wearing the bride at veil. The roots of this tradition come from different cultures, associated with the belief that the bride is vulnerable and needs protection against a variety of superstitions that arose in each era and around the wedding ceremony. Many of the reasons why the veil was used in various cultures will be totally unthinkable in modern society. Is this true? Yes, it's true. For example, it will be used in marriages of convenience and arranged by families in which the groom will not see the face of his fiancée until the wedding day, and only at the end of the ceremony. Imagine the disappointments. Just a little. Just a little. Susie. In addition, Many couples did not know each other and had engaged upon each other till the day of the wedding. Regarding this use of the veil, there are two popular versions that speak of the veil being lifted before or after the ceremony, before the ceremony. In this way, the groom and his family made sure that they were giving them the correct daughter and that they were not being victims of any deception. After the ceremony, in this version, the veil is lifted right after the ceremony. So if the groom does not like what he sees, he can no longer back out since the marriage is formalized. Today, in many Eastern cultures, the veil is still used to cover the bride and prevent other people not belonging to the most direct family from seeing her face. Another more superstitious motive will be the use of the veil to protect and hide the bride from evil spirits that could frustrate her happiness. In many religions, the veil represents a sign of humility and respect before God. This act of reverence will evolve over time into a symbol of social status and power in families. Let us now turn to the chronological timeline of this tradition. It is said that the origin is oriental and it dates from the year 2000 BC. In principle, it was a compliment that single women would wear, representing modesty and maidenhood. The custom of covering the face at the wedding will have a social meaning, in which the man will want to keep the woman hidden away and hide her from the gaze of others. Western culture will adapt this tradition much later. In the 4th century BC, we know of its use in ancient Greece. In the classical world, the use of the veil had nothing to do with a romantic idea, but with a way to create a bridge between families and strengthen social and economic status. The bride's attire was of great importance and will only be used that day. The veil was attached to their hair with a pin or a ribbon, and the color, like the dress, will have to be intense yellow. Sometimes the brides also wore red veils that will protect them from evil spirits. The fabric of these veils was quite dense, so the father of the bride will have to guide her along the way so that the bride did not trip or fall. This is how the tradition of being accompanied while walking down the aisle began. Judaism in biblical times says that the groom covers the face of the bride before the ceremony and this will apparently be a promise that he will be getting married solely for her inner beauty. The veil will be removed once the marriage is official. There is a legend that goes back to the earliest literature. According to the book of Genesis in the Hebrew Bible, 
Jacob could be tricked into marrying the homely Leah instead of his beloved Rachel, because the former would have been hidden under Rachel's thick veil instead. It is said that Jacob then married both women. Are you the gatekeeper? In classical Rome, the bride will put on a red hairnet picking up her hair on the evening of the wedding ceremony. On the wedding day, the tunic will be covered with a saffron-colored cloak and a yellow or orange veil called a flameon will be used. It will be painted with designs of fire and flames, hence its name, which will serve to drive away spirits that could kidnap the bride before being handed over to her husband. This veil will also represent a sign of fidelity of the woman towards the husband and will cover the face and the body of the bride down to the feet. Under the veil, the bride will wear a simple white tunic, which will be woven in wool, a fabric chosen for the belief that it will bring good luck. The waist will be tied with a complicated knot, the Hercules knot, hence the expression tie the knot, that only the husband will untie. Later, Roman law will stipulate the accompaniment of five female witnesses, the bridesmaids, who will have to dress the same as the bride. This tradition is also due to the fear that the bride will be kidnapped by evil spirits. Being several women with the same dress, the evil spirit will be clueless. Another custom that we will keep until today. Already in the Middle Ages, color takes a backseat and attention is focused on the nature of the fabric and the ornaments. In medieval Spain, the importance of the white flowing veil became enormous and represented by itself the status of a married woman. A woman who had not covered her face before God and society will not be considered married. The nuptial ceremony will come to be called pelambres, or act of donning the veil. In England, this tradition will arrive between the 4th and 6th centuries. At the dawn of the 19th century, the veil was commonly used in all European courts. It will become an essential accessory in marriage ceremonies. The bourgeoisie will adopt this use as a desire to emulate the noble classes and royalty. At this time, the social status of the bride will be determined by the weight, quality and length of the veil. A key moment will be the wedding of Queen Victoria of England in 1840. She married at age 20 for love with Prince Albert of Saxony and this will mark a before and after in wedding attire. The white color is adopted as the main color the same as the orange blossom in the hair as a symbol of fertility. The veil will be very long. This will be the trend to continue in the years to come, both by the bourgeoisie and by the nobility. Orange blossoms will become so fashionable that when they were not available they will be made of wax, ivory or even ceramic. In the year 1558, the French girl Bernadette Soubirous supposedly began to see apparitions of the Virgin Mary in Lourdes. She will be dressed in a white dress and veil, in addition to a blue belt. Her words to Bernadette will be, I am the Immaculate Conception. And from that moment on, the color white was considered the symbol of purity and beauty. From this moment, the white veil and dress are imposed naturally in religious marriage celebrations. This conforms the image we have of the traditional Western bride, who has maintained the importance of the color white to this day. The 20th century. In the 1920s, what prevailed was the lace cloche headdress. The veils were made with silks and some will be decorated with flowers and foliage that match the bride's bouquet. Juliet cap veils were very popular, since they accompanied the bob haircuts of the time very well. In the 30s, the Julie cut veil is still very relevant, but with less embroidery and embellishments. Tunic-type dresses are made simpler, and the same goes for veil designs. They will be worn loosely on the bride's head. Hats are still in fashion. In the 1940s post-war, the birdcage hair dress became fashionable. Brides could be forced to make them themselves from homemade materials and will use lace from curtains and upholstery, which will also make the dresses. The lengths are shortened, being the most common at shoulder height. In many cases, when the weddings were on military leave, the brides will pull the best dress and hat for the ceremony out of the closet. 
In the 1950s, fitted skull cap veils and waistline veils emerged, highlighting the small waist of fashionable dresses. Brides who could afford it would be draped in longer tail veils for a more dramatic effect. Volumes became important in the 60s. Let's think about Priscilla when she marries Elvis. The veils were worn high on the head, emerging from honeycomb hairstyles or the iconic pillbox hats. The materials will almost always be synthetic to achieve the volumes desired by the brides. With the arrival of the hippie movement in the 70s, the veil begins to relax. Brides look for long, flowing styles with minimal embellishments, with flower crowns and floral trims or just white brimmed hats. The Juliet cap veil reappears with a lace trim all around, making the style more bohemian. The mantra of the 80s will be the bigger the better and the wedding veils will be no exception. The most famous example of the time will be Princess Diana with her epic 7 meters long veil. Cathedral veils with lace ruffles will become fashionable. The change in fashion of the 20th century makes that in the 90s the preference is basic and minimalist compared to the excess of the previous decade. This trend is still quite popular today. At the beginning of the 21st century, brides had a wide range of varieties and styles and far from following a tradition, there is now a preference towards personalization, both in the style of the dress and in the veil and accessories. Some brides will go for vintage styles, others will follow their own rules by choosing simple hair clips or sparkly hair dresses on their head. Some will choose not to wear anything at all. Again, a royal wedding. Kate Middleton's to Prince William in 2011 brought back the trend for flowing veils. Kate's near 2 meter long ivory silk veil was a scallop and featured chantilly lace trim, a look many brides wanted to emulate. Now, more than ever, brides are completely free to choose what they want to wear on their wedding day. It is a more personal style and can be a real reflection of the bride herself rather than the trend of the decade. Tastefully selected to enhance the wedding dress, a veil can add that whimsical fairy tale element to wedding photos. Whether elaborate or simple, the wedding veil can undoubtedly enhance the dramatic impact of bridal hall couture. Unlike many other exclusively nuptial traditions, it can help differentiate the wedding day as special and unique above all other days. A delicate icon of a day to remember. Far away are the superstitious origins of such a special ornament.